There have been very few players as good as Robert Williams on the defensive end, and the crazy thing is that there are still people who may not even know who he is. He's been the defensive anchor for the Boston Celtics, who have been the NBA's best defense since the new year began. They boast a league best defensive rating of 105.1 points allowed per 100 possessions. Their defense has been legitimately elite, and it's due in large part to the awesome stuff that Rob Williams is doing for them on the defensive end of the floor. People love to talk about his defense, but he also does a lot for them on the offensive end, even if the box score doesn't jump out to you. He truly is one of the most underrated centers in the NBA right now, and in this video I'm going to tell you why. Real quick guys, before we get into it, only 5% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you enjoy this video and you love the NBA, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. It's completely free and it helps me out a ton. With all of that being said, let's get right into it. Now, as I said in the beginning, the obvious draw with Rob Williams is the defensive upside that he's shown, but before we get into all of that, there's a more underrated aspect of his game that I don't think people are talking about enough, and that's his ability as a passer. Now, if you're looking at Rob Williams' stats on the year, you may look and see that he's only averaging two assists per game, and therefore, it's really easy to just ignore his assists. But those two assists per game actually tell a much bigger story than you might realize. The level of floor vision that he's displayed this year is really impressive, and the passes that he's making are well above what you'd expect from a center. His ability to find cutters while under pressure with the ball in his hands is pretty unusual. He makes it look so simple, but the level of feel and awareness that you have to have in order to successfully make some of these passes can't be overstated. When he occasionally gets the opportunity to playmake out of the high post, he further exhibits that really solid feel for the game. He's always aware of the off-ball movement going on around him, finding the open man more often than not. I also like some of the stuff that he does in the pick and roll, like here. He's gonna set the high screen on Tatum's man, and he gets the ball as he initiates the roll. He recognizes that Jordan Wara and Drew Holiday are collapsing on him, but he realizes that that leaves Langford open in the corner as a baseline cutter. Langford makes the right cut and Williams gets it to him for the easy dunk. Here we're gonna see him pass out of the paint, something he does very, very well. As he rolls, he gets the ball into the paint, Kenyon Martin Jr. left Langford on the perimeter to provide help, which left Langford wide open. Williams, of course, recognizes that, and he spins around to sling the ball to Langford for a wide open three. This playmaking from Williams is a great example of why you shouldn't let stats tell the whole story with a player. Yeah, he's not averaging a ton of assists, but the stuff that we've seen shows just how talented of a passer he actually is. He even went as far as recording a triple-double against the Phoenix Suns back in December, putting up 10 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists with only three turnovers. I'd like to see the Celtics run more offense through him, not necessarily for the sake of him getting more scoring opportunities, but because he's so good at finding the open man and it allows other guys to work off the ball and create advantages. And outside of his playmaking, there's a lot to like as far as scoring goes with Williams. He's clearly a lob threat if you've watched any number of Celtics games this season, but he does a lot more than just rim running in the pick and roll. This play is really cool. We can see him come over to set a screen on Jalen Brown's man, and he actually fakes the screen while Robinson is sagging off of him and standing flat footed. That's when he cuts to the basket and Smart finds him for the easy lob. He's always eyeing the ball handler on offense and he stays moving with them at all times to allow for the easy lob when the defense collapses. Here Schroeder has the ball and Vooch is guarding Williams towards the baseline and as Schroeder initiates the drive, Williams keeps moving in sync with him to set up for the easy lob. He times the runs on his cuts for a lob perfectly. He knows when to wait until the absolute last second to begin his motion to ensure the defense has as little time as possible to recover. Here, when Jackson and Bain trap Tatum, Adams is forced to come off of Robert Williams on the baseline. Horford is going to get the pass from Tatum, and William calls for the pass from Horford after Adams has already committed to guarding Al Horford, and it leaves Robert Williams wide open for an alley-oop finish. Now, there's very little in the way of a scoring game outside of the paint for Williams right now, but he's definitely not an offensive detriment. 
He provides enough on the offensive end that you can't ignore him. He's just simply too smart of a player to be left unattended to by the defense. Now, while his offense is certainly underrated, the main draw with Williams is his insane defensive ability. The blocks are obvious. He's recording the fifth most blocks per game while also recording the third most steals among the top 10 shot blockers this year. He's got a fair level of defensive versatility. He's not just someone who camps out in the paint and hunts blocks. He provides a ton of help defense on the interior, making it a lot more difficult for the offense if they beat somebody off the dribble going to the rim. He's also really athletic, so even if he bites on a pump fake and you're able to go up for a shot, he's capable of immediately getting back into the air and still somehow getting the block. He anchors their entire defense. He usually guards the paint and watches the offense unfold, and by the time the opposing team thinks they're in a position to get a shot off, he's there and he's able to completely shut the play down. He doesn't do a whole lot of strictly man-to-man -man defense. He primarily operates as a roamer in the paint, either calling out rotations when needed or providing help on drives. On this play, you'll see Denver gets the rebound, and the whole time, I want you to pay attention to what Williams is doing. As the ball moves back, he's watching what the offense is doing and where the ball is moving while simultaneously being aware of where Rivers is behind him. When Jermichael Green goes up for the layup, he barely even has to try because he knew exactly what the offense was gonna do. I mentioned some of that defensive versatility earlier. According to Basketball Index, Robert Williams is one of the best on-ball defenders and help defenders at the rim in the entire NBA, and he's the only big man that's a positive in both of these metrics. He can come out to the perimeter and be a serviceable defender and not be immediately blown by. He's so quick on his feet and so lengthy that even if he does get beat, he can sit and wait for the layup for the right moment to go for the block and bait the ball handler into taking a shot at the rim for him to block. Here he came out to guard Will Barton on this play and Barton tried to drive, but Williams does a great job of cutting off a favorable angle to the basket. Barton gets a slight amount of space, but even still Williams is able to just rise up and snag the block. I also want to shout out his rebounding ability because he's been a rebounding machine this year. He's averaging 11.9 rebounds per 75 possessions this season. He's just got an unstoppable motor and a nose for positioning himself to get the board. He's been one of the best in the league at getting points off of putbacks, which is just another testament to the level of effort that he gives on every single play. Him getting these rebounds generates so many extra possessions and more scoring opportunities for his team. By getting these putbacks, getting these offensive rebounds and kicking it out to shooters and being able to restart possessions, it just allows your team to have more opportunities to score the ball. And when you have more possessions, you're more likely to win a game simply because that's more opportunities to score. To me, there's really no doubt in my mind that he's going to end up being a double digit rebounder throughout his career. I could easily also see him competing for rebounding titles throughout his career, even though he's only six foot nine. His defensive upside is among the best in the league among young centers, and his versatility makes him such a commodity. The fact that he's only 6'9 and still capable of being so effective on defense is something that's becoming more and more valuable as the league shifts to a more positionless style of play. He has shades of Draymond Green and Ben Wallace in terms of defensive versatility, and while he may not reach the heights that those guys reach on defense, their versatility and ability to protect the rim despite size limitations is what makes me see shades of those guys in him. I always refer to Rob Williams as a diet Draymond because he's got that really interesting playmaking ability from a guy who's not quite a center, but he's also not quite a power forward either, and he's also becoming a very switchable and versatile defender. I'm honestly kind of surprised that he's not being mentioned more in Defensive Player of the Year conversations. He's got the counting stats on defense with his blocks, steals, and rebounds, and impact metrics love him, so he checks all of the boxes. Now, I'm not saying that he should be top three in the conversation or anything like that, but in the NBA's most recent Defensive Player of the Year ladder update, he wasn't even mentioned. I think he's pretty easily been one of the best eight defensive players in the NBA this season. He also should pretty easily make an all defensive team. He's been one of the most versatile bigs in the league and the fact that he's played such a large part in the Celtics becoming this defensive juggernaut, there's no doubt that he has a case to make it. 
He has enough upside to be in Defensive Player of the Year conversations, and even if not this year, I've seen enough from him this season that he'll easily be a perennial all-defensive team candidate for many years to come. So what do you think of Robert Williams? Do you think that he can win a Defensive Player of the Year in his career, and if so, how many? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and like I said earlier, only 5% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you're new to the channel and you love the NBA, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.